Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. Hello, and today's video is about morphology of maxillary canines. Canines are the four anterior teeth located at the corners of each quadrant for each dental arch. Since they are located in between the anterior or the incisor teeth and the posterior or premolars and molar teeth, they are called the cornerstones of the mouth. The name canine is derived from the Latin word canus, meaning dog, and they are given this name because of their resemblance to a dog's teeth. They are the most stable teeth with the longest root of all teeth in the oral cavity. The bony plate over a canine tooth in the maxilla is very thick and is called the canine eminence. The canine eminence is a vertical ridge or prominence on the external surface of the maxilla lying over the canine tooth which provides the main support for the facial skeleton and facial musculature. Coming to their functions, the function of a canine tooth in mastication is intermediary to incising function of incisors and grinding functions of premolars and molars, that is, they have cheering functions. They also play a role in phonetics and aesthetics as well. The maxillary canines erupts at the age of 11 to 12 years and their root is completed at the age of 14 to 15 years. Let's have a detailed overview of all five surfaces of this tooth. From the labial or the facial aspect, the tooth is convex in all directions and is pentagonal in shape. The pentagonal shape is mostly due to the single cusp of the tooth. That's why they are often called cuspids, which means a tooth with a single cusp only. From the mesial and distal margins of the labial surface, the tooth is convex and has a rounded mesoincisal and an even more rounded distoincisal angle. The distal margin is shorter than the mesial margin. The single cusp of the canine produces a labial ridge on the labial surface of the tooth which ascends through the middle of the crown in a labiogingival direction. This labial ridge divides the labial surface into three lobes with the middle lobe being the most prominent lobe. Separating the three lobes and lying on either side of the labial ridge in the incisal portion of the crown are two faint concavities or depressions, called the mesolabial and the distolabial developmental depressions. The cervical line is quite evenly curved towards the root. From the lingual surface, the mesial, distal and incisal outlines are similar to that of the labial surface. The cervical line, unlike the labial surface, curves asymmetrically with a slight offset to the distal. Some other landmarks visible in this lingual view of the tooth is the cingulum and extending down from the cingulum is the lingual ridge located at the center. Between the lingual ridge and the mesial and distal marginal ridges are shallow depressions just like the depressions present on the labial surface, these depressions here in this lingual surface are called the mesolingual and the distolingual depressions. From the mesial surface, the tooth is wider labiolingually and just like other anterior teeth, it is triangular in shape. The labial outline of this triangle is convex and the lingual outline is concave in the incisal half and then convex in the cingulum area. The cervical line is curved evenly towards the incisal edge. The distal surface is similar to the mesial surface with only few exceptions. It's generally smaller with shorter lingual and labial margins. The lingual outline of the distal surface is comparatively irregular in shape. The cervical margin exhibits less curvature incisally than it does on the mesial surface and a concavity is usually present in the cervical half of the distal surface. Incisally, the tooth is convex in both labial and lingual outlines and the tooth has got a thicker labiolingual dimension when compared with the incisor tooth. 
The greater development of the middle labial lobe is also evident from the incisal view and contributes to the increased convexity of the labial outline. The root is single and as mentioned before is the longest root of any tooth in the mouth. The root is wider labiolingually than mesiodistally. On a cross section the root exhibits mesial and distal surfaces which converge towards the lingual, hence making the labial surface of the root wider mesiodistally than the lingual surface of the root. The labial and lingual surfaces are convex while the distal and mesial surfaces are slightly convex or have flattened outlines. I hope you all like this video. If you think this video was really helpful, please do like this video and share it with friends. For upcoming videos, please subscribe the channel and turn on the bell icon to get notified on each upcoming video. Plus, if you have got any suggestions for the next video, you may write them down in the comment box. Thank you for watching.